Hi, so today we're gonna to talk about how we learn at Wildflower. We're gonna do a quick overview of self-determination theory. We'll talk a little about learning on demand instead of learning just in case. And we'll also cover the four C's. So again, just who we are, uh, Wildflower Learning Community is a non-traditional private school. We serve students from kindergarten all the way through 12th grade, and we're located in Sheridan, Wyoming. We have a foundation of self-governance and self-directed learning. We value creative thinkers and curious go-getters. We also deeply value democracy and civic participation. By creating a space in which democracy lives, wonder grows unhindered, and independence blossoms, children's natural response is to thrive, to reach, and to grow. And what we know about people is that humans are wired to develop knowledge, skills, and intelligence. They consistently find unique ways of being and doing. They're immersed in opportunities and challenges of the real world, scaled down, and then children naturally develop through this process into informed, active adults committed to making their communities and the world a better place to be. So let's jump into the how we learn portion on self-determination theory. So this ties in a lot, very, very similar to self-directed learning. So you'll, you'll hear a lot of overlap. So self-determination theory in a, in a general definition is a broad framework for understanding factors that facilitate or undermine intrinsic motivation and psychological wellness. This is a huge issue and it's very directly related to educational settings. So when I talk about intrinsic motivation, you can just think of an internal drive. It's a motivation that's originating within the person. It's not an external force or an external pressure. It's not a carrot and it's not a stick. It's I'm doing this because I've chosen to and I have a desire to do it. So the conditions that support an individual becoming self-determined or having that intrinsic motivation, which is very powerful in our lives, there are some things that they need to have in the environment, in their experiences, that will allow them and facilitate that development. So three of those uh, key factors are relatedness, competence, and autonomy. So relatedness refers to a need for caring individuals within your context, in your space, in your environment. So those deep relationships and those trusted adults and or peers, those are very, very important and impactful on a child. And competence refers to the need to feel the effects of one's own behavior. So I really want to own my own wins and I want to learn from my own losses. Oftentimes in a very traditional uh, classroom or a traditional learning environment, the onus and the responsibility of the learning often lands with the adult in the room. And children don't feel the effects of that to the same magnitude as if they are driving the bus themselves, which gets us into autonomy, which is the right or the condition to be self-governing. So I have a say in how things go. And then I feel the effects of my decisions and my behaviors. It also refers to the need to feel that I'm acting out of my own sense of volition and my own sense of self-endorsement. I make a meaningful choice. I act it out. I have compassionate, caring people in my environment. And I feel the effects of my positive and my negative choices. All of that, when you feel that relatedness, when you operate with competence and you're acting with autonomy and freedom and free will, what they find is that that human becomes independently motivated and it brings them to self-determination. And what we see in the learning environment is this creates a very, very great space for the learning to be sticky. So if you're making choices and you're engaging with that content or that skill or that concept, whatever it is, that is the kind of learning that a person holds on to because they've thought it out in the first place. So it's very powerful when you get self-determination in action in a learning environment. So self-determination talks a lot about motivation and it's coming from within rather than coming from without. And that's the real key detail to get that differentiation. And according to self-determination theory, along with play researchers and neuroscientists and psychologists and 
anthropologist and doctorate degree level research in almost any scientific field dealing with humanity outside the educational field, at least, knows through research that a human, and in this conversation, young human, which, you know, AKA children, still human, I always like to point that out, they have a natural drive to explore their environment, to grow, to learn, and to develop the skills they need to be successful adult versions of themselves. And an important goal of education then is to cultivate this inherent drive, this interest that exists within the learner. Our job is not to force curriculum or to push a separate pace from the child or to constantly evaluate without any invitation from an external perspective. Our job is to create space for that child to flourish, not to crush that natural intrinsic internal drive. And at Wildflower, we give them lots of time and space and freedom and choice so that they can really become well-developed, self-directed individuals. That brings us to learning on demand rather than learning just in case. Because I can already hear your concern of when will they ever learn to read? How will they ever get the math lessons that they should have before they leave you? All of those things are valid questions they just kind of fall by the wayside when you actually experience a self-directed learning environment because they get the basics because they're basic. So learning on demand instead of learning just in case. Oftentimes in a traditional setting, you'll see material presented to a child repeatedly throughout the years. We call it a circular uh, approach to a curriculum where you're touching that concept over and over. Well, when you're learning on demand, it's not necessary for that level of repetition from the curriculum itself. The child might choose to practice something over and over and over again. But as a whole, they don't need to touch that concept every year, multiple times a year to really grasp it and hold on to it. Again, it goes back to that sticky learning. When it's my decision, I hold that learning within me. So at Wildflower, life is our curriculum and the world is our classroom. And all the learning happens within context, so it has immediate meaning. We can hold on to the why of the learning. And there's no abstract process that removes the reason we're learning from the learning itself. So if I'm learning to measure something, it's because I'm actually measuring something. If um, we're talking about chemistry and in the kitchen, it's because I'm actually doing chemistry in the kitchen. It's not a worksheet that talks about something or a video that's showing me an example of something. It's because I'm actively engaged in that process right now. And that learning is very powerful. So games, play, interest-based inquiries, passions, curiosities, all this blends together and it creates a curriculum that's individualized to the precision of each child. There's never been a standard child and a standard curriculum will never measure up to a personalized journey. Instead of learning lesson after lesson of like, just in case you might see this later or just in case this might come up in your future, we allow children the chance to learn what they need right now. This allows children to practice over and over. How do I learn best? They're learning how to learn. They discover their preference and the way that they choose to access new information, the way they move through new concepts, and all the while mastering new skills. They choose and they learn through trial and error what's going to work best for me. So do I want a lesson on something? We can do that. It might look very similar to a traditional student-teacher interaction for a while. That's very possible and it happens frequently, but it's because the child has requested. Uh, would you rather do trial and error for a while or would you rather watch a tutorial? That's okay, go for it, learn that way. Access new information in the way that works for you best. Or would you rather do a deep dive into the topic? You wanna to read about it and research about it and talk about it and conceptualize? Great, do it that way too. And then work on the hands-on applications when you're ready. So the discovery of self comes through this process too in such a beautiful way. And the goal of learning 
is based on the individual. How do you learn best? What, let's figure that out and then let's capitalize on that. So students gain confidence and resiliency through this process of learning in a self-directed environment where they have freedom, time, and choice. They become more of themselves in this process of learning, and that is the ultimate goal. Aristotle said, to know yourself is the beginning of all wisdom. And Lao Tzu also said that knowing others is intelligence, but knowing yourself is true wisdom. Mastering others is strength. Mastering the self is true power. And the world needs these kids to be fully engaged with life, to shine and to be unique. And at Wildflower, we love to celebrate that process of coming into oneself, that they occupy their space and they feel their emotions and think their own thoughts. We don't need cookie cutter versions of humanity. We need their perspective and their unique capabilities and their life force in the world. And then at, at Wildflower, we also focus on something that's called the four C's. So if you were going to choose standards for the future, these would be the four uh, economists and, and leaders in industry are mentioning these four words that start with C uh, frequently. In 10 years, who even knows what industries and jobs are going to be available to our kids? Uh, they haven't been invented yet. So how can we prepare them? How can we know they have the resources required to thrive in those environments, in those positions, if we don't even know what those positions will be? So these four C's really allow a child to be flexible and agile and to succeed no matter what the skills are in demand at the time that they're adults. So they're not specific skill sets. We're not you know, doing rote memorization to master this one tiny little box of content. These are life skills. No matter the field, the consensus on the skills that adults are going to need moving forward in the future and now are critical thinking, creativity, collaboration, and communication. So jumping into what is communication. Uh, when we talk about communication, we're talking about the practice of conveying ideas quickly and clearly. Much of communication is tech-based and it lacks tone which, I mean, I think we've all gotten a text message that we misread <laughs> and we inferred what it meant and it didn't mean that at all. So it, it's important that they understand how to transfer an idea clearly and proficiently. Uh, it's extremely important in our personal life and in our workplace. Still more important is the ability to communicate with a person across the table. This includes minimizing tangents, you know, how do I tie a story together without losing you, rabbit trails sometimes we call them, um, speaking directly to the idea and checking for understanding, making sure we can tell if the other person is still engaged with us. Sometimes we say, read the audience. Even if it's just two people in a discussion or you're up doing a presentation at the end of a journey, watch and be aware of the audience that you're with and check in to make sure that they're tracking with you. Jumping into critical thinking, critical thinking is the practice of solving problems, you know, we, we think about, uh, talk about thinking outside the box to come up with unique ways to fix or solve or build or adapt, uh, among other qualities. So in addition to working through problems and solving puzzles and similar activities, critical thinking also can include elements of skepticism, being analytical about things. And getting into creativity, my goodness, Wildflower is just absolutely teeming with creativity. I can't keep up with the examples um, coming through every day. So really, this is that outside the box thinking. Um, you're coming up with a unique perspective, um, something nobody has ever thought before. And it, by definition, is laying out one's own path and creating something novel, something new. Structuring that process actually hinders it. You can't grade or teach creativity. You can only encourage and create an environment in which it thrives. You can inspire creativity, you cannot predict it, you cannot plan it, and you cannot control it. And it's beautiful. Students use each other as a sounding board or staff members that are coming up with an idea or a creation. And then that inspires another student to stem out from their own ideas and create their own creation. And it's a really powerful process, a wildflower. Which brings me into collaboration. Very rarely is an activity happening without collaboration. 
Collaboration is the practice of working together to achieve a common goal. And in today's world, say, the saying, it's who you know, not what you know, could not be more true. So to be successful in a profession now requires that you locate the experts around you to solve a problem, to reach a goal, or to create something new. And I don't think one of these four C's ever happens in isolation. It's often that they are weaving in and out. They're layering one on top of the other. Um, because in collaboration, you have to have clear critical thinking, clear communication, and you probably are going to need to be creative while you're working together with your team. So that wraps up how we learn. Thanks so much for hanging with me. We really focused on Wildflower self-determination theory, which leads right into self-directed learning, learning on demand rather than learning just in case, and also the four C's, creativity, communication, collaboration, and critical thinking.